Hi, for this Clarity series, this is the third of three videos about voice actors. And today I'm going to talk about directing voice actors. A good voice performance can make all the difference in the world when it comes to clarity in your media. Getting a good voice performance is largely about how a voice actor is directed. In many cases, that means less is more. Point number one, what makes a voice actor great is a great ability to interpret copy and dialogue. So when I'm producing and directing a voice actor for you, I try to use that ability. Point number two, a good voice actor brings fresh ideas to a project, especially when it comes to troublesome lines. I'll often ask an actor for ideas, which I will record and I will usually save as alternate takes. Let's start with point one. A good actor has a terrific ability to interpret copy and dialogue. I usually start my recording sessions by asking my actor to read a few lines from the script. That gives me a benchmark from which to start shaping the performance. It tells me how the actor sees the script, and it also gives me a second idea, in addition to whatever ideas of my own I may have. Voice actor Paul Payton is here to help with an example. Paul, can you read me that first paragraph, please? The M500C is Typetel's first entry in the smartphone market. It offers all the features you're looking for, and more, and is so user-friendly that it makes competing phones obsolete. Can I hear it again with just a little more drive? We can pick it up to something that's a little bit more commercial, for example. The M500C is Typetel's first entry in the smartphone market. It offers all the features you're looking for, and more, and is so user-friendly that it makes competing phones obsolete. Paul, I think your first idea sounded a little more believable. Let's go with that one. Once those first few lines are shaped, a professional voice actor usually has a pretty good idea of where to take the script. Point number two, a good voice actor usually brings fresh ideas to a script. For that reason, I'll sometimes ask voice actors to improvise or to do alternate takes. I've invited actress Emily Reese to help with this example. We're recording a set of step-by-step -step instructions. I've told Emily I want them to be matter-of-fact, not too overdone or overcooked in terms of inflection, Let's see what she does with them. The Wonder Widget is user-friendly, with a password protection feature that will prevent use by unauthorized persons. And because it will be used in your home, this feature also makes it completely child-proof. Emily gave me what I asked for, but I think it sounds a little bit too matter-of-fact. Emily, that sounds good, but is there a way to warm it up a little bit, maybe make it a little friendlier without taking away the pace of step-by-step -step instructions? Okay. Let's try now. The Wonder Widget is user-friendly with a password protection feature that will prevent use by unauthorized persons. And because it will be used in your home, this feature also makes it completely child-proof. That version was much better, but is there a way to make the child-proof phrase sound a little more like a safety issue than a security issue? Like if you could warm up that phrase just a little bit more. And because it will be used in your home, this feature also makes it completely child-proof. Okay, I like that. So let's keep the original and record an alternate with that smile in your voice. So when I direct the voices for your project, I try to guide the process. I don't try to tell the actors how to read. Directing means providing direction. Think about it. When somebody asks for travel directions, you don't jump in the driver's seat and take over the driving. You give them instructions on how to get from point A to point B. On that note, let's go to Skype. Here with me today are Donna Coney Island, Paul Payton, Emily Reese, and Michael Jarvis. Today we're talking about directing voice actors. Do we all agree that the ability to interpret copy and dialogue is probably the most important skill an actor has? Or am I focusing too narrowly here? No, I, I think it is important. I think the ability to interpret is important because you're trying to get the message that's on the page across to the ear. I agree. Um, interpretation and delivery is 100% so important. What about ideas? Going into a session, I like to have as many ideas as possible on my palette of ideas. I have the client's ideas, I have my ideas, so I often like to ask the actor, how do you think this should play?
I'm comfortable with giving my interpretation right off the bat, if that's what the director, producer, the client wants. How do we get what's on the page off? If you want input, I'm glad to offer. It helps to know a little bit who I am, where I am, and what I am. And then let me go. I do like to get some idea of what the director has in mind for the project. I'm glad to explore because there's the creative part of the thing. What do you do to prepare for a script when you're going into a session? When I get a script, I just read it through straight once. I, then I take a pencil and I'll underline words that naturally punch to me. Um, words that I think uh, the client is going to want punched. I need to know how local pronounces it. For example, the uh, FGH Corporation, in-house. Do you pronounce it FGH? Do you pronounce it FGH? There is a local culture. You try to get that. You try to phrase it. So I'll actually mark it up. I'll put little arrows where I want my voice to go up or where I want my voice to go down. Pencil. Never pen, because copy gets rewritten in the studio no matter how well it was done. I look to my actors to make subtle changes when I give them directions, not big jumps in emphasis or emotion. Can you talk about that a little bit? When you're first starting out, you know, the, the tendency is to overdo. I was in a studio one time and they got the stage actor. What's it like out today? It's a beautiful day, I think. No. That microphone that's right there, that's my ear. I don't know if it just comes with seasoning that you're able to incorporate uh, all the technical stuff, the pitch variation, the vocal variety, and, and blend it all together into a little ball that, <laughs> that, that works and sounds natural. What I try and do technically is create uh, light bulb moments. Take the words from the page and try to speak them as if they were your thoughts coming out of your mouth. A light bulb moment is maybe you're moving into the next paragraph and it's a little bit of a breath and it's a little bit of a, hey, how about this idea now? Another point I mentioned earlier is that um, good direction is when a director or producer makes it comfortable for an actor or a voice actor to try different ways to do things and I should point out whenever we do that we always do the original as required and we do an alternate take if we think we have an idea that the client might like. Sometimes if something doesn't read well or if it's awkward or if the sentence is kind of funky I might be able to say you know it sounds a little funky how about if I said it this way? The more intricate the more scientific the more medical um, the more financial it is it has to be written in, in proper grammar. What I've come to realize is that often there are lawyers involved in making sure everything is, is written correctly. My mother was an English teacher, so she done brung me up good and learned me how to speak very well English. Thank you all for helping me out today. Emily Reese, Paul Payton, Donna Coney Island, and Michael Jarmus. And thank you for watching.